just so that we can focus on why we're here, Lord, and that is to worship you. I pray, Lord, for these prayer requests, those that were spoken, those that were not spoken. Lord, you know the needs, Lord, and we trust you this morning, Lord, to answer, Lord, according to your will. Lord, we trust, Lord, your judgment, Lord, because you're the creator and the keeper of this earth. And we thank you, Lord, for just what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us the way you do. And, uh, Lord, once again, I pray, Lord, that your spirit, Lord, will come down like a mighty rush of wind this morning, Lord, and that we would accept it, Lord, and do what you have us do this morning. Dear Brother Steve, as he brings a message, Lord, just put it, Lord, your words in his mouth, Lord, so that we can, Lord, hear what you have to say to us, Lord, that we can, Lord, be, Lord, apply to our lives and be better Christians for you, Lord, if there's one here, Lord, that doesn't know you, I pray for the holy conviction, Lord, come down, Lord, this morning, Lord, that, Lord, that they would realize, Lord, that they're lost and they need you, Lord, they need you as a Savior, Lord, go with us, Lord, we leave this place, Lord, we we'll be, Lord, um, we'll be a light shining this world, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. He might celebrate a birthday this week. All right, I got two. Anybody else celebrate a birthday this week? All right, let's stand and say happy birthday to these two.
thank y'all for praying for that, and we're happy for him and excited for him. And uh, we don't necessarily want him to leave, but I believe me and his mother have been cramping his style a little bit about uh, him being back at the house. Uh, but uh, but I'm happy for him, and y'all just continue to pray for him as he travels there uh, to start his new job. So, but it is good to be in God's house today. Uh, I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. I urge everyone to come back and be a part of that. Uh, and learn, like I said last Sunday, learn about your partner. Uh, make sure you know their colors and what they like to eat and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, so I was asking Sherry her favorite color, and um, I think she said gray. He's cheap. No, no, it's cheap. He's trying to win. But you know, she asked me, one thing I didn't understand, she asked me my favorite color, and I thought, 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 and I thought, I don't have one. I don't have a favorite color. I mean, it, that there's nothing that I don't like more than any other thing. So, uh, so you better get that one right. But I'm looking forward to it. It's always a good time. We did this at, uh, when I was at Bottle Hill one one Valentine's Day, we met at a restaurant and we had uh, this game, and uh, she blew it, and we lost. Uh, so, a uh, lot of pressure on her. A lot of pressure. Uh, but uh, and the thing about it was, it was for for work. But your husband liked to go most on a vacation. I had just shown her pictures of where I would like to go the week before. And she said, like, and I'm like, that's not what I just showed you. <laughs> this is my dream vacation, and she picked oh, away. So. I'm not still bitter about it. I don't mind losing. Uh, but one thing that they did realize at that church, that we had to quit playing games. Because one of the couple games we played had to deal with balloons. And you had to pick a balloon up and pop it between you and your partner. And whoever went and done this and popped the most balloons won. Without using your hands. Without using your hands. You just had to have it against your body. And I picked her off the ground and she never touched the ground. I mean, I was just boom, boom, and her feet was just swinging. And I mean, her head was flying back. So they, they, that night they said, "Yeah, we're not ever playing this again." So and we still didn't win. So, but anyway, it is good to be in God's house. It's uh, it's good to be here. It's good to laugh. It's good to to be able to have fun and, and just. Be happy in the house of God. And so I'm grateful for that this morning. I'm thankful for each one of you. I urge you to come in tonight and, uh, and be a part of our Valentine's. Uh, my kids always call it Valentine's. Uh, so uh, Valentine's celebration. So uh, y'all come back and be a part of that. We're going to go Lord in prayer. We're going to turn it back over. Dear God, I thank you this morning, dear Lord. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you uh, that we as believers... Uh, can come together and have a great time for God just in you uh, and just be happy and uh, just rejoice and, and just have fellowship one with another, dear Lord. Uh, dear God, I pray for this service today, dear Lord. I pray, uh, dear God, if this message touches someone's heart today, that they would react, they would move. Uh, dear Lord, this is uh, one of those that's probably going to hit us all, dear Lord, but uh, dear God, I pray that your Spirit would be in the midst of the Lord. Dear God, I thank you and we love you and we just give you all the honor of the Lord and ask you in Jesus' name. Amen.
52.
know, if I would have been out here singing, I'd have been in SIT. Because in the key of Satan, everything's right. I'm the only person in this whole church that can sing lead, soprano, alto, bass, all at the same time. But today we're going to be back in Galatians 5. Uh, we're talking about pursuing holiness. Uh, we know the Bible says that God is holy and he calls us to be holy. And what that means as believers is, um, you know, when he forgave the adulterous woman, he told her to go and sin no more. Right? He, he didn't say, go and do the best you can. Go and you know I'll forgive you. No, see the goal as believers is for us to sin no more. We can't reach that, but that's still supposed to be the goal. Every single day we are to get up, pursue the holiness. He called us to be holy. And so we are to pursue to go today without committing sin. Can we? Probably not. But that's not how the Christian faith is now. We just go about living our lives expecting forgiveness. Right? We expect forgiveness. And so it's not a pursuit that we have to be holy as God is holy. But God has given us a way when we accepted Him and the Holy Spirit of God come to live in us, He has given us a way that we can now pursue holiness in our lives. The Bible says that no man faces a temptation that God doesn't leave a way out of. Right? And so, if I'm to be holy as God is holy, then... If I look at the fruit of the Spirit, this is the character of God. This is the character of Jesus. And we have already talked about God is love. That deals with a lot of our attitudes, right? Toward people. Right? We, a lot of times we have very negative attitudes against people, but God loved everybody. I told them Wednesday night, how many times, I, or I think it was, maybe Sunday night, how many times have you made the statement, I hate a thief? Nothing I hate worse than a thief. And yet God got Zacchaeus out of the tree and went home and ate with him. Zacchaeus was a thief, and God saved the thief on the cross. So see, our attitudes toward others in love we should not preserve our love for someone based on their actions. We should have love for someone based on their soul. Because the Bible says that we all have a soul. And the Bible says that if you gave the whole world and lost your soul, so the soul is worth more than the entire world, and that soul is the same value in people you don't like as it is in people you do like. So the character of God's love, God is love, that deals with our attitude toward people. God didn't have to have an attitude of love toward us as his creation because we did what? We sinned against him. And nevertheless, he had a plan to send his son into the world to die in our place. He had an attitude of love, and so we are to have an attitude of love. And then the next one is joy, and that deals with our emotions. And joy is not happiness. Don't confuse. Happiness is determined by the things that happen to you. If you, have, if you have good things happen to you, you're happy. If you have bad things happen to you, you're not happy. Joy is 
nothing to do with happiness. Joy has nothing to do with your circumstances. Joy has everything to do with the fact that you are a child of the King. And you can find joy just as Paul and Silas did in the jailhouse after they had been beaten. You can find joy on the cross because the Bible says for the joy that was set before Jesus, he endured the cross. He went to the cross. It was joy for him to die in our place. And now we come to peace. So love deals with our attitude. Joy deals with our emotion. And peace deals with something that we all have trouble with. Peace deals with our mind. That's where the term peace of mind comes from. Right? We like to have peace of mind. And so we know in 1 Corinthians 14 and 33 that God is the author of peace. Just like God is the author of love, just like God is the author of joy, God is the author of peace. God, His Son Jesus, the Spirit of God are all in perfect harmony and peace. Jesus said, I can't do anything without the Father. The Spirit guides you in the direction of the Father. All of them work to bring about peace in your life. You know why the Bible says to renew your mind, David? You? Because typically we fill our minds with the troubles and the things of this world. Right? So we fill our minds with those things. And also, peace comes from God. Psalms 29 and 11 tells us that He gives strength to His people and He gives peace to His people. So peace is a it's not something that money can give you. Right? You got a lot of rich folks committing suicide every year. Do you realize more rich people commit suicide than poor? So we know peace don't come from having money and having things. So we know that peace comes from God because that's what God says. I give peace to my people. So we know he's the author of peace. We know he gives peace to us. And then Romans 5 and 1 tells us that we now have peace with God through Jesus Christ. In other words, the separation that we had from sin, when we sin, when they sinned in the garden, we were separated from God, and now that we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So I don't have to worry about the condemnation of God because I have been reconciled to God through Christ. I am at peace with God through my faith in Jesus Christ. And that sounds great. Does it not? Everybody hear that? So, that's so good. Right? But then let's talk about what hinders us from having peace. Amen? Can I ask anybody in here Right now, how perfect peace. Yeah, there, there's a few things that hinder us. And we'll get into all of them. But the first one is worry. Anybody in here a worry? Anybody? I worry immensely about my son finding a job. 
knowing that God was in control. And God placed him at a, a college <coughs> where all the coaches, the athletic director, is more focused on Jesus than they are football and sports. But I worried about it. Oh, I hope he finds out. Oh, I hope he finds out. Worry today. But God has a plan. My wife prayed. You know what her prayer was? Give him one door. Because he is much like me, and if you give me multiple choices, I'll choose wrong. Amen? Give him one door. And God give him one door to walk through, and it just happened to be the door Or they want him to lead men to Christ. Yes. But I worry about it. Anybody in here worry about things? See, worry, when we worry, it's about future troubles. It's about future troubles. Things that have not even happened yet. Yet we can't get it out of our minds and we worry about it. Constantly. Well, what did Jesus say about worry? In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was teaching on worry and he says, Therefore I say unto you, and this is Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit under his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow and they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God shall clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, what I say worry was. Worry is about things to come. Take no thought for tomorrow. For the things of tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, by show of hands, how many in here worry? All of us, right? So, this is a characteristic of God. This is something that I can have in my pursuit of holiness. And I have access to it through the Spirit of God. I have access to love the Father through the Spirit. I have access to joy through the Spirit. And I have access to peace through the Spirit. And yet, everybody raised their hand that you worry about things. We worry about tomorrow. We worry about things that might happen this year or next year. We worry about... Uh, and, and, and here's the thing. The world worries, but God told us not to. 
He said, seek him first. You know, now we have to be careful when we, you know, we, we're, uh, uh, God didn't say I'll clothe you in Calvin Klein. Right? God didn't say you'll be a Ralph Lauren model. God said, I'll provide you with your needs. I know the needs you have. And if I take care of the birds, and I take care of the grass, and I take care of your crops and your fields through rain, how much more am I going to take care of you who trust me? So worry is a hindrance to us having peace and it is something that we all as believers struggle with. Can I say something worries on the devil? It is. Because you have to understand all these characteristics God's trying to get us to have, Christ-like characteristics, Satan tries to get you to be opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, Satan will tell you that person over there ain't worth a quit. You shouldn't have nothing to do with them. You should talk about them. Right? They are not any good, so you don't need to love them. Can I tell you something? If Satan can get you not loving certain people, then you won't pursue anyone's soul. Because if he can get you to believe that certain souls are not worth saving, then he can get you to not work on saving other people. Amen? And so it comes from the devil. He wants to steal your joy. Why? So other people in the world can look at you and see that you're just as unhappy as they are. You're no different than they are. You're not, you don't have joy in your life. When troubles come, you crumble just like everybody else. When your circumstances are bad, we fold our tent. Because God wants the world to see us the same as they are. They want to see a church without joy. They want to see a church in turmoil. And Satan wants to steal the peace that God tries to give you. Yes. By making you worry. Yes. See, that's peace has to do with the mind. And God's word tells us we've got to renew our minds daily for the things of God. Daily, we have to renew our minds. If we're not renewing our, renewing our minds daily, then Satan will put thoughts in your head, the world will put thoughts in your head that make us worry and fear. See, worry is what happens in the future. We worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, and he said, take no thought of tomorrow. And then fear... It's what we do today. Fear is our circumstances that we're in right now. Whether you was without a job, and I feared, right, that he wouldn't find something. Whether you're going through a rough spot in your life and you are in fear today. You know how many times the Bible, I didn't look it up, and I don't know it off the top of my head, but you know how many times the Bible says fear not? You know why it says it that many times? Because God knows it's going to be an issue for us. <coughs> right? The same way we have to repeat to our kids. Amen? How many, how many times do you tell your kid to clean the room? Once? No. You have to repeatedly tell them and then they act like that putting a few things away in the room is like digging a ditch ten foot deep 
don't have to. He knows that he's not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us the spirit of peace. But fear is what we do when we're in a situation. I am fearful. I am fearful of my circumstances. And when you're in a situation, do not think for a second that Satan don't whisper to you and say, God ain't going to get you out of this. Or God will bring out your past sins and say, because you were this bad, God ain't going to help you now. You're on your own. And we'll start what? Fear. Fear will overcome us. Anybody in here ever been overcome by fear in their life? I have. So fear is a hindrance. But listen to what God says in John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. God said, I'm giving you my peace. Can I tell you what God's peace looks like? You remember when the disciples were sailing to the other side and the storm hit? And they were all panicking? Oh my God, they were up there worried to death in complete and total fear of what was about to happen. And Jesus was sleeping. What did they say? He don't care about us. He's going to let us die. Where did you think they got that from? They had been with Jesus this whole time. They had seen him heal people. They had seen him do all kinds of miracles. And then when they're in their situation and he's asleep, they start going, he don't care about us. Jesus was sleeping in perfect peace. And he got up and he did what? He questioned their what? Their faith. Where is your faith? And he looked out over the water and said what? Peace. Be still. And the water went like glass. Everything calmed down. See, God gives His peace to the water. And it was like glass. See, that's what He tries to give others. For when the storms of life come, we're not in fear because we can find rest in the peace of Jesus. Amen. And I don't know about you, but one of the hardest things to control is your mind. It's hard to control. <coughs> so we have worry, we have fear, and then we have conflict. Anybody in here have conflict with people? Uh, just be honest. I still remember a story Joel told about when he was working at a plant in Scottsboro. Him and this lady butted heads. I mean, didn't get along at all. And God told him to go apologize to her. And Joel said, when, when God told me that, he said, well, I ain't doing that. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I'm not going to apologize to her. If anybody apologizes, she'll apologize to me. I'm not going to do that. So he did. But then God just kept asking. You got to apologize. You got to apologize. And finally, much like Noah, going to 
going to Nineveh, right? Reluctantly, he went down and apologized to the woman. And she just broke down in tears because of everything going on in her life. <coughs> you see, God says in Matthew 5, 23 and 24, if you're bringing an offering unto the Lord and somebody has aught against you, you are to leave your offering and go and do everything in your power on your end to make it right. He also says sometimes it's not possible. We can't control what other people do. But as far as your end, you are to do everything in your life to live peaceable with everyone. You are to forgive. You are to say you're sorry. You are to do everything in your power to live peaceable with everybody in your life. Is that easy? No. It's not easy at all. Is it possible? Yes. From our end. Not from the other person. You might go try to make amends with somebody that's done you wrong. And you may say, look, I forgive you. I want us to be okay. They might tell you to jump the river. You can't do nothing about that reaction. But you do everything you can to make the relationship right. And so conflict with one another. We have conflict in the world. We have conflict in the church. God's people can't get along sometimes. Can I tell you, it's, it is 99.9% of churches. Can't get along. You can talk to any pastor you want to talk to in this area. You can go to another state. You can go to Florida where Nathan is down there. And you can say, hey, Brother Nathan, you ever had any conflict in the church? And he'll sit and talk for you for days. And conflict hinders your peace. Conflict hinders your peace. And I've used this several times, but when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he looked down at those people that was mocking him, that had plucked his beard out, that had spat on him, that had beat him with a cat of nine tails until he was almost dead. The ones that laughed at him as he carried his cross up, God got this heel. The ones that laughed at him when he was hanging on the cross, the ones that mocked him, he looked at those people and said, I forgive you. You don't know what you're doing. See, he didn't look at them with scorn. He didn't look at them with hatred. He didn't look at them with malice. He looked at them with pity and forgiveness and said, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. When the guards came into the garden to take him, and Peter, being Peter, who he is, and oh, you ain't taking him, pulled his sword out, cut the guy's ear off. Jesus rebuked Peter and put it back on. Jesus didn't high-five Peter and say, oh, that boy, you got one. No, he, he healed the man. Why? Because even though what they were doing was wrong, even though what they were doing was not just, he wanted his relationship with them to be good. And so conflict affects our peace. That's why Jesus says to hate those people that, I mean, to love those people that hate you. Right? That's why they're saying is that when you love people that hate you, you heat coals on their head. Right? When you love somebody, and you respond to them with grace and dignity and compassion.
when they all talk about you and hate you, you heap that stuff on them. It's not on you. You don't bring that home with you. They do. And God says, we are to get along. Get along with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Get along with those of the world. We're to make every effort on our end to do all we can to be peaceable with people. So, we know God gives us peace. I know how, how I have the availability to have the peace of God in my mind is through the Spirit of God. So what do I need to do more? How can I grow in my peace with God? How can I grow in peace? Have you ever met somebody for the first time and you didn't trust them much? You know what I'm saying? You met them and you didn't know them real well and so you didn't really trust that they did what they say. Or, you know what I'm saying? And how did you build that trust? You had to do what? You had to spend time with them and get to know them. Right? So if I'm going to have the peace that God has given me freely to have in my life and in my mind, then I just got to get to know Jesus better. Because, see, if, if I love his word enough and the things that he wrote about, I read about and I study about and I learn, but I learn more about him. That's the beauty of a Paul. Paul said, I want to know more. This was at the end of his life. He had done serve God faithfully. And at the end of his life, he said, I want to know more. He didn't know enough about him. He wanted to know more. And Paul had a peace. He had a peace that whether he lived or whether he died, didn't matter. He was at peace. He had peace in his mind. How? Because he got to know Jesus and all through his life, he never stopped wanting to know more. See, sometimes as we grow in the church, We get to a place where we just want to relax, right? I don't want to teach anymore. I don't want to do a class anymore. I don't want to do anything. I just want to, you know, I've done my part. You ever heard that? We've all said that, right? I, I, I just want somebody else to do this. I've done my part over the years. Can I tell you who wouldn't have said that, Paul? Why? Because Paul never got tired of studying and learning about Jesus. He always wanted more, 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 more. So if I'm going to grow in peace and trust, I have to trust in the Lord more. And the way you do that is to learn more about Him. You learn more about Him. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. He, he says, you're not extinct from trouble in this world. But where the trust comes in is, he went on to say, but I hope to come to the world. I'm telling you these things so that you can have peace. Because in the world, you're going to have trouble. But here's where the peace comes in. I've overcome the world. So you can put your trust in me. And no matter what trouble you're in, you can find peace. No matter what situation you're in, you can find peace. So we have to trust him more. 
And you're going to do that by learning more about him, then we have to pray. You know, I think prayer is something we don't utilize near enough. But in Philippians 4 and 6 and 7, the King James says, be careful for nothing. A lot of the other versions say this word that I struggle with, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And here, here's the kicker now. And when you do that, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So when I go to the Lord in prayer, after I've learned about Him, after I've learned his characteristics and learn who he is and learn more about him and my faith has increased and my trust has increased in him, I can go to the Lord in prayer knowing <coughs> that he hears me and that he will give me peace that passes all understanding. In other words, you can't understand it. The world can't understand it. It's a peace that only comes from God. And he'll keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I don't think we pray enough. And I don't think we pray earnest enough. I think we believers have developed a lot of generic prayers. We, we just we say the same stuff. Right? We all pray the same things. And, and, it, and, and, and we do it because it don't come from way down here. Right? We pray the same prayers because it's something we've heard somebody else pray. Everybody else prays this way. So we pray and let everybody else. God don't want something everybody else says. God wants your prayer to come from your heart. From way down in your heart. Make your request known unto Him. Not a ritual prayer you pray every night before you go to bed. Not the same prayer we pray in church every Sunday before we start and end the service. I'm talking a heartfelt prayer from down deep in your soul to God. That'll bring you peace. That'll bring you peace. But first we've got to get the hindrances out of our way. We got to get the worry out of our way. We got to get the fear out of our way. We got to get conflict out of our way. Can I tell you one of the ways to have peace is to make peace with your fellow man? Make peace with your fellow man. And when worry and doubt. Come into your minds. Some of y'all have kids that's off at college. Some of you have kids that's going to be off at college. Some of you have kids that just got married and moved out on their own. Some of you have kids that's going to be moving to Mississippi. Some of you have kids that had their first child. Anybody worry about them? We do, don't we? But God says, just bring all that to me. God says, if you'll just bring your burdens to me and lay them on me, I'll give you peace. I'll give you comfort. Just bring all your troubles. Because I'm going to tell you something. You'd rather be the one protecting your children or you'd rather God be the one protecting your children. Amen? Amen. I'd like rather to know they're in the hands of God than in my hands. So we get, when worry hits us, pick up the Word of God. Read about it. Read about what God said about worry. Read about what God said about fear. Look up all the times in the book, in God's Word, where it says, do not fear, or fear not. You don't even have to read the whole verse. Just go to all the scriptures and read, fear not, fear not. 
not. Do not fear. Do not fear. Fear not. Fear not. And then take your prayers and your supplications with thanksgiving to God. And say, God, I'm being fearful. And you said, fear not, God. Give me peace. And he said, I'll give you the peace that ain't nobody can understand. I'll give you peace nobody can understand. See, love, joy, and peace. It, it, you have the trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And these are the trinity of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, and peace. Love, joy, and peace. And God tells us you can have them all. You can have them all through the Spirit of God. And you can bear much fruit of love and joy and peace in your life. If you're here and you're lost today, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if God's dealing with your heart, that you're lost and conviction's there and your heart's pounding and it's heart racing and you know you're troubled right now because you realize you're a sinner. You see, it's so great because I was thinking before I got up here, it was not hard for me to trust in Jesus for salvation. It was not. But, and the reason it wasn't is because when the Spirit of God dealt with me, I saw who I truly was and I had nowhere else to run. Amen? I had nowhere else to run. If I run out that way, I'm running to hell. Only possible chance I had was to run this way. And be saved. And it wasn't hard to trust Him for my salvation. But what's difficult is trusting Him daily. Giving your life completely over to Him. And saying, God, God, whatever comes, you've got me. Whatever comes, God, you've got me. Whatever happens, God, you've got me. See, that's the tough part. And that's where you have to know about him and learn about him and read about him and study about him so that you can grow in faith and trust in him. So when the storms come, you remember when God got Peter out of the jail? Y'all remember that? When God sent the angel to get Peter out of jail, what was Peter doing? Had to wake him up. Can I tell you something? You can throw Stephen in a jail cell tonight, and Stephen won't sleep a wink. Not going to sleep. As long as I'm there, I'm going to shut my eyes. You give me five years, I'm awake five years. It's not going to happen. But Peter had peace. And so, the angel had to wake him up. Come on, let's go. See, that's the kind of peace I want. It's not the peace I have. It's the peace that's available, but it's not the peace that I have right now, but I want it. In pursuit of holiness, I want that peace. To be able to find rest in no matter what situation. I've got rest in you, Jesus. I've got trust in you, Jesus. And you're going to give me a peace that I can't even understand. How many of you are troubled this morning? By anything. It, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's if some of us might think, well, that ain't nothing. My troubles are bigger. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just kind of what they say about surgery. They call surgery minor unless it's happening to you. And then it's a big deal. They had to put me to go back to sleep when I, they had to get something out of my throat. And my wife kept saying, Stephen, it ain't no big deal. You'll be awake before you know it. And I thought, that, you lay here beside me. Let them do you that way. If you think it ain't that big a deal, I'll put you to sleep. So however big your trouble is today or however small it is, 
It doesn't matter if it's big, if you then come where the peace is found. Come where the joy is found. Come where the love is found. Can I tell you something? You'll find it down here this morning. You'll find it. Come with the song, Jerry. This morning, I just... I love this song, she ain't sung it in a long time, but I just want to speak Jesus over everybody here and myself. That's where it's all found. That's where all the love and joy and peace, that's where every bit of it is found. No matter what's troubling you today, that's where it's found. You. 
in here now. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care. He's yet. Amen. Thank y'all this morning. I appreciate your attention. Does anybody have a word before we dismiss? You know, we, can I just be honest, I've lived my whole Christian life thinking a lot of this was undertaken. And I think a lot of it's that. But it's not. It's not. These men and women in the Bible put their pants on just like we do. We live in a different time and a different culture. But everything in here we can have, it is a pain. But it's just like anything else. You have to want it. You have to want it. God's made a way through the spirit of us to have it. But you've got to choose to love. You've got to choose to have joy. And you've got to choose. To have peace because we know that peace only comes from God. So if I know it only comes from God as a child of God, and I know He gives it to me, then I gotta start asking for it. I gotta start giving my worry and my fear. And I start giving my conflicts. I have to give them all to Him, and in return, He'll give me that peace. Peace. Anybody else got a word? Yeah, he's in revival this week at Freedom up in Pisgah. Everyone up for being here this morning. Corey Griffin, dismissed.